American democracy is hanging on by a thread. Its fate, once again, hinges on the outcome of the 2024 election. And like it or not, it's going to be determined by vibes only. I just like the vibe here. Hey, Brian, you know the old saying, would I like to have a beer with this person? Does anybody want a draft on the house? Hold on a sec. I'm going to get me um, a beer. Aw, let's pour one out for Liz's presidential. Make mine a nice Pinot Noir. Now, don't get us wrong. Policies matter and have real-world consequences in and outside of elections. On issues like healthcare and climate, for example, the stakes are quite literally life and death. But put simply, for most voters, politics comes down to how candidates are perceived, how authentic they are, and how they're talked about at kitchen tables and online. In other words, vibes. And the vibes are constantly shifting and sometimes defy logic. For example, only three years separate Biden and Trump in age. But the discourse would suggest they're of a different generation entirely because vibes. And Trump has 91 indictments and counting, but he is not losing Republican support because, well, vibes. So on this pod, we'll check the vibes of American politics and we'll keep an extra close eye on the right wing extremists whose whole vibe is undermining democracy and restricting our freedoms. We're talking book bans, a woman's right to choose, LGBTQ rights, and the freedom to literally just exist in public spaces without being shot and killed by someone who has no business owning or possessing a gun. Now, that may all sound pretty doom and gloom, but as you can probably tell, that's not really our personal vibes. We prefer to keep it light and we believe there's always something that can turn the vibe around. For Courier, I'm Brian Derrick. And I'm Glenis Mahar. And on this podcast, we've only got one rule. Vibes only. Only.